Captain Midnight. This video was brought to you by Skillshare. If you ever want to feel like 2008 happened a hundred years ago, I highly recommend watching Hancock. A movie that, thanks to its Soldier Boy jokes and Michael Bay inspired color grading, manages to feel about as 2008 as you can get. So it might feel a little bit weird that I decided to devote a whole video to it in 2021. But those who have watched my career video covering Will Smith will know that I've always liked and followed the actor, and Hancock is one of the more interesting points in his career. It's a mess of a film, filled with interesting ideas, funny moments, and a few horribly misconceived plot elements. And this week, I wanted to get into that and talk about why I think the movie has a stranger legacy than you might believe, and how it marked a critical moment in old-school, star-driven filmmaking. Hancock was directed by Peter Berg, a guy who would go on to make Mark Wahlberg movies like Mile 22 and Lone Survivor. Back then, he was mainly known for Friday Night Lights, a decent movie that spawned a much better TV show that Berg also had a hand in. Berg has never really been a superhero franchise guy, and Hancock seemed like an attempt to create a superhero mythology that wasn't tied to Marvel or DC. And it's clear why that was an attractive idea to Will Smith as well. The late 2000s saw the shift away from star-driven blockbusters to brand-driven ones, as sequels, reboots, and soon the concept of the cinematic universe would kind of come to replace the idea of having a huge star as the surest path to box office gold. By then, Will Smith and Tom Cruise were two of the very, very few movie stars who could land massive, superhero-scale budgets just by starring in a movie. But it was also clear that superheroes were increasingly becoming the biggest game in town, even before the MCU took off. So instead of having to fit into a pre-existing character from Marvel or DC, I totally understand why Smith would want an original character of his own. A character that, it was hoped, could rival the success of Spider-Man or the Batman movies just by the sheer force of Smith's star power. And I actually almost think they were onto something with this character. Hancock was marketed around the idea of Smith playing a homeless, alcoholic superhero. Someone whose life is kind of in shambles even as he begrudgingly saves the day. It's not a bad idea. In fact, I could see a version of this movie where it's pretty great. But that's not quite the version we got. See, the script for Hancock had been passed around Hollywood for a decade by the time it started production, and in that time it had been written and rewritten in a bunch of different tones. Originally written by screenwriter Vincent Goh in 1996, Hancock was originally called Tonight He Comes and was much, much darker. In this version, the Hancock character was pretty much the villain after becoming obsessed with a Charlize Theron character who had no powers in this version. He kidnaps her and murders scores of cops in a brutal hostage situation. Having read a good portion of this script now, I don't think it was particularly good. It lacks a lot of the problem of the finished film, but it replaces them with many of its own. A lot of the dialogue reads like someone trying to write like Tarantino and doing it kind of poorly. Still, a homeless alcoholic superhero was an attractive idea, so the script kept being kicked around and it was eventually rewritten by a former X-Files writer. His script included the Immortals mythology that we see in the final film, but was still a hard R-rated dark comedy. But now that Will Smith was involved, the studio got cold feet, deciding it would probably make more money as a lighter PG-13 film. They demanded the writer do draft after draft, never quite sure what tone they wanted to settle on. That writer got sick of the whole process and decided to jump ship for a TV project of his that had just been greenlit. Probably a smart move since the writer was Vince Gilligan and the TV project was a show called Breaking Bad. After he left, Big Fish writer John August was brought in who lightened up the film even farther. What we're left with is a movie that I think has the making of an incredible role for Will Smith, but without the story or clarity of purpose to really back it up. Look, I love it when movies can juggle a lot of different tones well. I just rewatched Martin Scorsese's After Hours recently, and I was amazed at how well it could pull off broad comedy, surrealism, and really dark, uncomfortable scenes about suicide in the same film. So I'm really okay with movies that try to pull off huge tonal shifts. But Hancock is not a movie that handles it well. 
The film starts out with kind of a light comedy action tone. Hancock stops some bad guys while very drunk, but causes so much damage that people are mad at him anyway. After saving Ray, a PR man played by Jason Bateman, the character sets out to change his image from a drunk asshole to a beloved superhero. I think this is a nice little setup for a movie. It may not be groundbreaking or anything, but with solid performances, I could totally see this being just a really likable Will Smith summer film. The thing is though, you have to be really creative when trying to do an alternate, more adult take on superheroes because it's been done so many times. And Hancock isn't really a movie that's interested in the questions that its own premise raises. Like Watchmen is a story about power and how it would be used and abused by those elite few who possess the abilities that no one else does. In that comic, we see how superheroes slowly but surely erode those characters of any real sense of morality and are able to justify all kinds of horrific actions because characters like Dr. Manhattan and Ozymandias eventually see themselves as far above their fellow man. And a movie like Unbreakable takes an entirely different and more grounded approach giving us not a loud costumed hero, but a quiet average guy who's slowly discovering that he has powers he can't understand. Hancock doesn't really have a handle on what it's trying to do or what it's trying to say in the same way that either of those do. And it's a missed opportunity because I think there's traces of a really funny superhero satire here. I liked Hancock trying his best to put on a costume and fit into the mold of what we imagine a superhero to be. His costume was clearly modeled after the early X-Men films, and it just doesn't fit his personality at all. And at first, I thought that that was kind of the point. Like that Hancock would learn that he doesn't have to fit the bill of what society thinks of as a superhero to be one. Again, that's not like groundbreaking, but it is a story beat that I at least could see the film doing well. And then all of that goes out the window in a big, and I mean big, tonal shift. I can't remember the last time I watched a movie that took such a major turn into being a completely different kind of movie out of nowhere. That massive shift I think actually starts out pretty promisingly. Hancock reveals that 80 years ago he woke up in a hospital with no memories of who he was, with superpowers and the ability to never age. Suddenly the character became a lot more interesting. I like Smith's performance as a drunk jerk, but the script up to that point hadn't really given us much insight into him. What made him this way? Why does he still feel compelled to perform these heroic actions despite barely seeming to care about anyone at all? With that reveal, I thought it was snapping into place. That he had become the way he was because he had seen everyone he cared about die. He was going through the motions of saving people because that's just what he'd always done, but all the passion for it was gone, driven out of him by this never-ending, changing life where he couldn't relate to anyone. Turns out, no, that's not what the movie was doing at all, even a little bit. Instead, they pull off this reveal that the PR guy's wife, played by Charlize Theron, is actually another superpowered immortal in disguise, and Hancock's wife from thousands of years ago. She left him because when they are together and happy, their powers fade, which was a problem because their species of gods or angels or whatever you want to call them were being hunted into extinction. If that doesn't at all sound like it would be in line with the movie I was describing earlier, you'd be right. I'm not saying that it's an idea that's totally terrible in any context. I mean, I would happily watch a movie where Smith and Theron play immortal, century-spanning gods, but it's shoved into like the last 40 minutes of this thing and it doesn't work at all. I think my biggest problem is there's just no texture to these characters, or any sense of what their life was like together. You know how in Back to the Future 2 they add that bit of characterization to Marty that he like loses his mind when someone calls him a chicken? Hancock has that exact same trait except with the word asshole. And Mary does too with being called crazy. This isn't like really explored at all. I don't know why Hancock hates that word more than any other insults. He just does. Which I guess is fine, but it feels really thin when it's one of the precious few insights into what makes this guy tick that we see. For a movie about an alcoholic asshole superhero, it's not very interested in why he's an alcoholic or an asshole. Instead, it becomes all about this convoluted angel mythology. So once I learned that this was what the movie was really about, I was kind of baffled that we spent so long watching Hancock try to rehabilitate his image as a superhero. It comes away feeling like stuff that happened in an entirely separate movie. Will Smith stars in the coolest, most action-packed superhero film of the year, uh, Hancock. 
That's not to say that Hancock is without its moments. Will Smith playing a cocky, alcoholic superhero is gonna give us some fun scenes no matter what. But I understand why this never became the franchise that the studio and Smith himself were hoping for. It feels patched together from dozens of different screenplays, not quite sure in what direction it wants to commit. Here's the thing though, this movie was a hit. In 2008, nearly every Will Smith movie he had starred in had been, and he was fresh off of I Am Legend. The biggest barrier to a Hancock sequel seems to be that most of the people involved weren't really a fan of the whole experience. Speaking years later, director Peter Berg would say, to get us all together in the same room where we can talk and then agree on anything, you will never meet a group of people who will have a harder time agreeing on anything. And I think you could see that on screen. Hancock is a movie that feels like the people making it are fighting over what kind of film it could be, even as you're watching it. And for all of its fun little moments, they were never really able to settle on anything. Smith's star power has waned a bit since then. Co-starring in franchise movies like Suicide Squad or Aladdin isn't something I could see him doing back in 2008, when nearly every movie he was in was a Will Smith movie first and foremost. And while I'm sure his career is doing just fine, Hancock is a movie that will always make me wonder what could have been. If the polished, more tonally consistent version of this film would have turned out to be that hit franchise of his own that he really wanted, and that Tom Cruise has had for years in Mission Impossible. Mostly though, I just think this is a really fun idea for a movie, and I wish the creative team had been on the same page. The age of the star-driven mega blockbuster is mostly dead now, with franchises ruling everything. I mean, why else would we have a Cruella de Vil origin story starring a major movie star coming out this month? And although Hancock was a hit, it kind of feels like one small step in that transition happening. So, do you agree with me on Hancock? Either way, you can leave a comment below, but you could also make a whole video of your own to get your voice out there. Maybe you've thought about starting your own channel for a while. That's where Marquez Brownlee's class, YouTube Success, Script, Shoot, and Edit comes in. Only on Skillshare. Captain Midnight viewers have watched over 5,930 hours of Skillshare classes already, so I know I have an audience that's really interested in learning from their massive selection of courses. On everything from making YouTube videos, to learning science, making films, painting, and just about everything in between. Brownlee's class teaches you how to build a YouTube channel from scratch, with a special emphasis on getting the most out of whatever gear you already own. And no matter what class you pick, they're curated for learning, meaning you won't find any ads. They're classes that are designed to fit into your actual life, so you can follow whatever schedule suits you. There's never been a better time to sign up and start learning, with a premium membership that costs less than $10 a month. And the first thousand people to use the link in my description will get 30% off that premium membership. So start learning today and go to skl.sh slash Captain Midnight 05 to 11. Here's a special tip for the fellows and girls who have not already joined Captain Midnight's new 1940 flight patrol. You'd better hurry up and join at once because there's a big adventure ahead. The thing to do now is to get started because we're going to have not only barrels of fun, but loads of free gifts and prizes too.